Hi, we're Diana and Jerry. I have von Hippel-Lindau, a disease that causes tumors to grow in different parts of my body. In the video, my unruptured aneurysm, I told you about having scans for my headaches and they found an aneurysm in the back of my brain. After some worry, my mom, my husband, and I went to go meet with a vascular surgeon. Dr. M sat us down, went through our scans, and told us that the aneurysm was in a spot where it was very unlikely to rupture, but also where if it did, it wouldn't harm me. And then Dr. M told me he was moving away, that I should have a follow-up appointment in a couple years, and I forgot about the entire thing. Until September of 2021. I was scheduled for kidney surgery, and the doctors had my brain scanned as well, just to make sure everything was okay for surgery. Dr. C brought me in to talk to me about my scans, and he had something to tell me. You have an aneurysm right. on the right side. You know, a few years ago, it was smaller. Yeah. Now it's slightly larger. Okay. So there's a chance, there's a lifetime chance right. of a rupture. Mm -hmm. If that rupture is what happens is all that high pressure inside the blood vessel just comes out mm -hmm. and just surrounds the brain and then the blood, there's not enough blood going past it and like bad problem, mm -hmm. like really bad problem. It is thought that if the tumor, if the aneurysm in the location that you have is over seven and a half millimeters, it should be treated. Okay. That's what we would recommend as well. We don't do that kind of treatment here. Yeah. Because it takes a different kind of uh, skill set, different kinds of protocols and setup and sure. all that. Uh, well, so it also happens that you happen to live in Seattle. I mean, so in the Whammy region, it's probably one of the best places to get treatment for yeah. the aneurysms. So I met with the anesthesia team. They decided that they would watch my vitals very well, make sure my blood pressure didn't go up, and proceed with the surgery, being very, very cautious because of the aneurysm. So in the fall of 2021, after I recovered from my kidney surgery, I went to my primary care doctor and asked for a referral to find a new cerebrovascular surgeon. I ended up with a referral to Dr. P and I had a Zoom appointment with him. You know, I think, you know, your aneurysm at, at this size, um, you know, in this location, looking at it probably deserves uh, treatment at this point. You know, you're 54, you're pretty young. Yeah. And I would probably say that this aneurysm poses enough risk that at some point in your lifetime, it will cause a problem if we don't treat it. So I was freaking out after that appointment. Dr. P was sure I needed surgery. He ended up ordering an angiogram because he wanted to look further at the aneurysm. But an angiogram is like considered a major procedure. Plus, if they decided to operate on the aneurysm, he was talking about me being on blood thinners. I'm a person with a tumor disease. Being on blood thinners is not a good idea. I never know when I'm going to need surgery at the drop of a hat. So like I said, I was completely freaking out. And then the worst thing happened. It kind of turned out to be the best thing for me. Yeah, I contracted COVID-19. I could not go in with the popular sickness. And that was the end of my angiogram. There was one thing that Dr. P let slip during my appointment. Well, he, he, he did leave it with John Hopkins, but then he left Johns Hopkins, and now he's my partner. Dr. M was back in Seattle. So then I went about the awkward conversation of calling Dr. M's receptionist, who was also Dr. P's receptionist, and asking if I could get an appointment with Dr. M for a second opinion. I felt terrible. But you know what? There's a lesson there. I'm the customer. If I feel like a doctor isn't considering all the factors, like my von Hippel-Lindau disease, in what he wants to do, I need to advocate for myself. This isn't a restaurant bringing me the wrong plate of food and I decide to be polite and just eat it. This is my life. Did you know that 37% of the time when a patient asks for a second surgical opinion, they change their surgical plan? That alone is enough for me to get multiple opinions before I proceed with any surgery. I always do, and that's what I did in this situation. I found Dr. M, and I got that appointment. Is this really bigger uh, at all, or is this just a function of different modalities? So you can see how different this looks than the MR scan we were looking at. Sure. I think 
the way to sort of get at that question just a little bit with the least risk to you is probably to do the MR now so that we have an apples to apples MR scan. If we get a new MR scan, we may find it looks very similar or not changed enough for us to, to be concerned about. Okay. And just unlike the turn of events, I'm going to the hospital. I'm headed into Seattle to have an MRI of my brain. And then an MRA, which maps the blood vessels in my brain. So here's how it went getting an MRI MRA combo. I arrived at the hospital, did my screening, wearing a mask that matches my shoes, and I'm gonna head to get a bracelet before I go down to MRI. MRI is usually downstairs because that's how heavy things work. my follow-up appointment with Dr. M. Hi. Hey, how are you today? Okay, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to see you. Oh, good. I like that. Oh, and good. so uh, everything looks stable in terms of the aneurysm, just to, just to cut oh, to the chase okay. on that one. So I think, so I think that's uh, stable going back to, I think it's 2018 was the picture we had. It's, it's not a uh, a frightening looking aneurysm in terms of its shape or size. It's at a location where we rarely see them rupture for whatever reason. Follow up uh, for you said October, and that's, uh, let me get the year right. This yeah, what year is this? October 23. Okay. And there was much rejoicing. We get to rejoice now. He said, I get to yeah. go out this weekend. <laughs> A few months later, I went to see the ear doctor and he asked me if I had any new ear symptoms. And I told him that I was hearing uh, a whooshing noise at night, a kind of tinnitus where you can hear your pulse. And so he got worried that it was the aneurysm and he sent me back to Dr. M. I sent him a message on my chart. He was sure the tinnitus was unrelated to the aneurysm. And here is another video about my medical situation. And down here is a video that YouTube picked out just for you.